Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode or video depending on whether you're listening or watching this on YouTube or Spotify or uh, wherever podcasts are available. I don't know, I'm not very good at this podcasting, it's kind of weird for me. Uh, but welcome back to the Fresh Poets Society. I'm sorry it's been a little while. There have been some issues with my mental health and getting my prescription and things like that but I'm getting better now, I'm kind of getting back to normal and I'm very very excited to share some of your original poems with everyone listening. I've had a really really good time looking through your poems over the last few months, it's really genuinely helped kind of get me through a lot of stuff and I'm very very grateful to everyone who's still been submitting poems and getting involved and just being amazing, seriously. Today the theme that we're going to be looking at with poetry um, or the prompt that I gave you was the colour red which I didn't really know what to think of it, I just kind of I wanted to go for more of a vague prompt, one that wasn't quite so straightforward, something that could be interpreted in a lot of different ways, you know? When you think of the colour red you can think of flowers and nature and beauty and growth or you can think of kind of like the decay of leaves in autumn, you can think of destruction in fire, or you can think of blood and how that can relate to both pain and also birth and all those amazing things. Red is super significant because it can signify love, passion, hate, anger, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it's quite an interesting one and I was really really keen to see how you guys would interpret it in your poetry and also your short stories. We're going to be reading a couple of short stories by you guys but that is going to be a separate episode. Today we're just going to be focusing all on the poetry. So I'm still not 100% right so we're not kind of going to be analysing your poems in too much detail, we're more just kind of going to be reading, enjoying and for a bit of fun today I thought we could also compare and contrast to some as kind of established poets who've used this theme in their work and kind of have a think about what they've done and um, down in the comments we can kind of discuss this stuff and see what we like, what we don't like, um, see if it gives us any new ideas and that kind of thing. So uh, let's just let's just jump into this, yeah? The first poem we're going to be reading today was submitted by Scarred Scripts and it's titled Icy Red. Shriveled, clutching at beating chest, a beat, a pause, automatic hesitation. A crowded room surrounded with noise and light, and myself at a standstill, suffocated, snuffed out, unable to reach, to grasp inside my throat. An icy red, a collision of petrification and passion, still hidden from most, there's an invisible curtain here, and they won't come to me and I won't come to them. Flickering candlelight, embers across a jagged shore, I throw my arms out trying to grasp and throw out my thoughts before the survival mode and they're cloaked. But when I do call out, will it all go wrong? I open my mouth and I did it again, better to keep it all in than make another mistake. And I'll still see red until my words bleed. I see red, I see red, I see red. There's some absolutely like stunning descriptions and images in here, the flickering candlelight, embers across a jagged shore, really making use of that kind of red imagery but also how, you know, the title and that repetition of I see red throughout the poem is another way of saying how, you know, you're kind of suddenly flushed with passion and feeling and often anger, you know? Brilliant, brilliant little poem here, I really really liked it. It was great because it told a story without being too obvious, it shared a lot of thoughts without having to explicitly say anything and I think it was really really well done in this, you know? The next one we're going to read uh, was submitted by Erin Hance and um, this is kind of a... it's interesting because it's kind of less of a traditional poem in structure and it's more of kind of stream of consciousness, almost like a list, you have these great kind of long on-running lines, you know, great descriptions, short, sharp, snappy sentences, but also kind of long on-running paragraphs rather than your traditional stanzas. Um, I think it's really interesting how she's played with this, or he, sorry, Erin Erin could be anyone. Um, it's really interesting how they've played with the structure here and they have these beautiful images throughout 
and they wrote that this is a revised piece from when I was younger. I tried describing the colour red without ever saying it, and I think it's a really, really clever idea. So this is their poem in the colour cherry. Warmth. Not under the covers warm. The warmth that runs rampant in your chest moments before you do something you may regret. The wildfire running wickedly across all reasoning. Irritation. The kind that comes from scrubbing your eyes dry. Or maybe from scratching your budding bug bites. Your body wears its hardships loudly and with a feverish hue. Blood. The kind that never comes from anything pleasant. You'll forget the first time you saw it. The way it stuck out so jarringly against an otherwise pale wor world. The way it cobwebbed across the crevices of the surface. The first time you ever really pondered about what you're truly made of. Lips. The kind that cost $25. Colour changing lips. The first magic trick you ever performed. A superpower in the colour cherry. You'll never understand how your mother could call it vanity, how your poppy field smile could be anything less than ravishing. I, I absolutely love this and I think the descriptions in this are beautiful and stunning and I love the concept. I love this way of trying to describe something without being obvious about what you're describing, if that's what, you know, if that makes sense. Great, great use of alliteration in parts of this, you know, budding bug bites, cobwebbed across crevices, great consonants there. It's wonderful. It creates a really, really nice kind of flow and rhythm and kind of runs beautifully. I kind of wish there was maybe one last stanza or description, something with a little more punch, a little more power, something to kind of end it on a really, um, I don't know, almost, I don't want to say like a meaningful note, but maybe something a little deeper or darker or something to make you think a bit more. Maybe you could even just switch around the lips and the blood verses and having that last line be the first time you ever really pondered about what you're truly made of. That might be a hell of a lot more powerful to have that as the last line of the poem, have that, it, you know, have it end on that. That could work really well, I think. Um, but overall, I love it and I think it's fantastic. To kind of compare this, I want to read you a poem by Anya Silva called Just Red, which is fantastic. And a lot of the images in that last poem, especially in the lip stanza, reminded me of this poem a lot. And it's fantastic. And uh, I just thought it was kind of worth sharing. It's great. I stand in Walgreens while my mother sleeps. The store is fluorescent and almost empty. My father is ailing in a nursing home. My friend is dying in the hospital. What I want tonight is lipstick. As pure a red as I can find. No coral undertones, no rust or fawn, just red. Ignoring the salespeople, I untwist tubes and scrawl each colour on my wrist till the blue veins beneath my skin disappear behind smeared bars. I select one. Back in my mother's apartment, silence. I limb my lips back out of my wan face. There they are again. Smacky and wanting. I think it's brilliant, this idea that there's something so iconic, isn't there, about a red lipstick. It just feels very kind of like feminine, but also strong and empowering, you know. I was having this conversation uh, a couple of weeks back now with um, a friend of mine's mum and like a friend of a friend, and we were all there and they were comparing red lipsticks. And one of them was wearing this beautiful kind of warm red lip with these yellowy undertones. And the other one, um, who had much more pale skin, was wearing more of a bluish red lipstick. And they were both complimenting each other. And it was kind of it was beautiful to see these two women who looked very, very different and were wearing very, very different shades of red lipstick. But both were so kind to each other. They were so uplifting of each other. Um, so complimentary and it was wonderful and all three of us in the end start talking about how you know a red lipstick can really make you feel good about yourself you know when you find that right color there's something very empowering about it there's something that makes you feel good and it can make you feel beautiful it can make you feel strong it can make you feel confident but at the same time it also makes you stand out a bit. You need a little bit of confidence to wear it in the first place, but then once you do, it gives you more confidence. It's kind of a nice cyclical thing. Anyway, I'm kind of getting off point here. I kind of love it in this poem because here's a person who 
And again, it doesn't just have to be a woman, it can be anyone. But here's a person who, they're clearly going through some hard times, you know. Father's in a nursing home, a friend is dying, the mother's back at home, maybe unwell or depressed or whatever. Either way, she's not really present. And all this person wants to do throughout all this difficulty and hardship is just find a red lipstick and wear it. They just want something to make themselves feel good. Something for themselves. Something where they don't have to worry about anyone else. Just to kind of give them back a little bit of confidence, a little bit of themselves, a little bit of heart, a little bit of passion. And um, I think there's something quite beautiful, if not a little bit sad about that, you know? That's why I kind of love this poem. And that's why um, I want to kind of read it to you guys now because it reminded me of that lips stanza in the last poem by Erin. Uh, moving back to your submissions though, I wanna read a poem that was submitted by Alice called Fire. She wrote about this poem that inspiration struck when I saw pictures of the wildfires in California turning the sky completely red. The birds have left their nests and fled, lest smoke chokes them until they die. Though I seek them among the red, they're gone from California skies. I remember when radios sang to the sky, don't fall on me. But as the flames around us close, it seems it was death to our plea. The world has all turned to crimson. Heat dries our tears before they flow. We live in a nightmare vision, and it was us who made it so. Beautiful, stunning poem that, again, is a little bit heartbreaking, but powerful, and I think it's fantastic. Really, really great interpretation of the theme there, because she's not necessarily talking about Red specifically, but she used that prompt to be like, okay, what does this make me think of? And then make a great kind of almost politically social statement about you know, wildfires and how humans are often the causes and, um, you know, we, we need to do something and look after our planet. And I think this poem is a really wonderful, beautiful, powerful reminder of that. While we're talking about the impact of humans, though, I do want to read another poem by a well-established poet called Wilfred Owen called Greater Love. And this is a beautiful poem, but it's one that's quite unusual for me to talk about because it's a war poem. And war poetry isn't really something I'm all that interested in. It's not, I guess, my favorite topic to cover, but this is a wonderful poem. You know, with people like Wilfred Owen, you know their work is good even if it's not to your taste. You know, like Robert Frost, fantastic poet. Even though I'm not a fan of pastoral poetry, I can appreciate the craftsmanship behind his work and it's the same here um but e either way uh he uses red imagery a lot in this and obviously talks about the impact of humanity and how it can have a negative effect on the world while in the last case we were talking about um humans having an effect on the environment this one is about humans and war so i you know different but similar to some extent i guess and i, I thought it was you know, a good segue into reading you this wonderful poem. Red lips are not so red as the stained stones kissed by the English dead. Kindness of wooed and wooer seems shame to their love pure. O oh, love, your eyes lose lure when I behold eyes blinded in my stead. Your slender attitude trembles not exquisite like limbs knife skewed, rolling and rolling there where God seems not to care. Till the fierce love they bear cramps them in death's extreme decrepitude. Your voice sings not so soft, though even wind murmuring through raftered loft. Your dear voice is not dear, gentle and evening clear, as theirs whom none now hear. Now earth has stopped their piteous mouths that coughed. Heart, you are never hot, nor large, nor full, like hearts made with, made great with shot. And though your hand be pale, paler are all which trail your cross through flame and hail. Weep, you may weep, for you may touch them not. So yeah, pretty um, intense poem there, but wonderful and important nonetheless. While we have kind of slightly violent or graphic imagery going on, I want to read you a poem that was submitted by Jane Murphy called I Don't Know How to Use My Words. Blood red lips, it drips. Off my too bitten tongue, words scratching at a throat that does not 
make a sound. I always imagine them flying away, a fiery passion pit in my stomach, an anger in acid and words on a tongue, as sharp as a knife. I don't know how to use them. It radiates red, ready, a feeling desperately pure yet devoid, and I avoid all confrontation because it's only confirmation that they'll know of my fury, and I am a void. The golden home tones of your honeydew voice smooth over every surface, a cure for the desperate. Throat, mine, still lays open, agape, a blushing mess of coal and brimstone. I need to spit the fire out. The flames never listen, their tongues are not mine, every thought rapidly eaten, hardly divine. I define it as a miracle, deem myself an oracle, yet I still am only a body speaking at faults, a blending of rotten grapes, a foul red wine, blood red lips stain my two bitten tongue, and I still do not know how to use my words wonderful really really wonderful and a fantastic really creative use of enchantment in the structure of this it was really really good what they wrote about this poem was uh, that this poem was not so much written with the idea or prompt read in mind but but it does feature a lot as it's a color i tend to associate with anger and desperation amongst other things this poem expresses the frustration to be unable to express anger or negative feelings in a cohesive way it's about being angry at yourself for not being able to convey what you wanted to convey. And I really think they fulfilled that intention completely. It expresses it really, really well. And it, it's kind of interesting that, you know, the poem's about being unable to express your feelings very well, and yet that is expressed so well, you know? It, uh, I sound silly, don't I? But um, it's it's fantastic, you know? Those images of, you know, a blushing mess of coal and brimstone, I need to spit the fire out. The flames never listen, their tongues are not mine. It, oh, it, it's beautiful, it's stunning, it's a little bit disgusting in places, you know. I still am only a body speaking at faults, a blending of rotten grapes, foul red wine, blood-stained red lips, uh, my two-bitten tongue. Yeah graphic and I don't want to say disturbing images but uncomfortable images and it really does you know the images that it conjures up in your mind really do make you as uncomfortable as you feel when you're unable to express yourself properly it is a nasty feeling it's awful and um it's expressed so well through this poem this poem is like the epitome of showing and not telling and it's brilliant. You guys are so talented. I'm so impressed. The next poem that I want to read uh, was submitted by, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, but uh, Nel Nelky or Nelk, um, and it's titled You Dress Me in Red, and again it's a fantastic example of showing and not telling in poetry that works really really well, and um, I'm just gonna, just gonna read it to you guys and uh, we can discuss it afterwards. It's called You Dress Me in Red. We were dancing in rounds right through the night, spinning in circles right through the stars. Beauty and heartbeats, a smile untouched sheets. Words formed worlds and step, step and step, right to infinity, a beautiful melody, voices at night time. Under a lamppost, you planted a kiss, right on red lips for red roses to grow. You let me shine, you made me glow, you dressed me in red. Ripped smiles, broke hearts, left a girl's empty hand to an unfinished end. Without saying a word, I shattered a world. Black lips received and returned, and red roses rose. In a red dress, I spun, leaving my heart to a heartbreaking run. In a similar theme, uh, Leia, I hope I'm pronouncing that right as well, uh, submitted a poem called Most Beautiful Girl. And I want to read you this one kind of at the same time, because similar kind of imagery and um, a similar sort of interpretation of the theme and both brilliant poems but yeah if only i could dance with her the most beautiful girl her red hair shimmers under the soft lights her big brown eyes catch me watching her she silently invites me to the dance floor but everyone looks at me and says don't go then his voice fills my head and shouts you can't go 
but she takes my breath away. The movement of her dancing body, enticing. The way she sways her hips, enchanting. If she is the most horrendous sin, I am the most horrendous sinner. So until hell wants my soul, I'll dance with the most beautiful girl. To give a little bit of uh, context, uh, Leah wrote about this. I don't like to add context to my poems, but I just wanted uh, to, I guess, justify why I thought the poem fits this theme. It wasn't just because the girl has red hair, but because most of my life I've associated red with Satan, sin, and lust. When I wrote the poem, that is how I felt I was starting to submit to sin, and the reason I wrote that the girl had red hair was to symbolise Satan, sin, and lust. Really, really brilliant poem again. Slightly different kind of interpretation to the last one. Um, both had imagery of dancing and lust and romance, but one was kind of looking at it in a kind of love, passion, heartbreak kind of way, and the other was kind of looking at it as though, you know, their feelings of lust and romance and love were sinful and bad, and it kind of made them worried and ang not necessarily angry, but, you know, they, they kind of felt guilt about them. So similar imagery, different feelings, both brilliant poems. <laughs> Before I read you the last submitted poem, I want to read you one more um, kind of poem by a, a great poet called Ella Wheeler Wilcox called I Love You. This again is not explicitly about the colour red, but it does feature in it a little bit. It's kind of one of the poems that was in my mind when I, I guess, kind of put this theme of red forward, you know? Anyway, it's a good poem. It's called I Love You. I love your lips when they're wet with wine and red with a wild desire. I love your eyes when the loveliest lie is lit with a passionate fire. I love your arms when the warm white flesh touches mine in a fond embrace. I love your hair when the strands unmish your kisses against my face. Not for me the cold, calm kiss of a virgin's bloodless love. Not for me the saint's white bliss nor the heart of a spotless dove. But give me the love that so freely gives and laughs at the whole world's blame. With your body so young and warm in my arms, it sets my poor heart aflame. So kiss me, sweet, with your warm, wet mouth, still fragrant with ruby wine. And say with a fervour born of the south that your body and soul are mine. Clasp me close in your warm, young arms while the pale stars shine above. And we'll live our whole young lives away in the joys of a living love. <laughs> I love this poem. It's basically about how she would rather take a little experience and passion and you know, wild, lustful emotions and you know, real passionate love than innocence and purity and, you know, strict, calm rules and all that kind of thing. And uh, I think that's something I and a lot of you guys as well probably can relate to. The last poem I want to read that was submitted by you guys um, is called My Relationship with Red and it was submitted by Maria Serena. I danced with red on hot coals and Cinderella's ash. I slipped out of my dress, took off the shoes I forgot to wear. Red often leaves me bare. He offers me a kiss, a smile on his lips. Then he places his hands on my hips, leads me to the bed, says sweet things and pours me some tea. The water boils and it reminds me it is far too hot to touch, but I do it anyway. When red is away, he writes how much he loves summer and when he returns, he brings strawberry kisses, dandelion wishes, and we laugh about the promises of our impossibilities. When I was a child, full of naivety, so I didn't notice him. It wasn't until I fell in love, he watched as I loved a man who forgot I was a girl. We both saw Red, but we did it anyway. Red was there at my first physical therapy appointment, but had nothing to say. He handed me a pen and showed me my body. His eyes spoke. What level of functionality does your pain, your red, allow? He's with me now at the corner of my bed, says nothing. To fill the silence, I light a candle, make myself a bath. The water's hot, but red says it won't burn if you add roses. So I do. I add more roses, more red. But I must have put too many. I didn't see the thorns, and soon after, I was dead. I love that personification of a colour, a feeling, um, an experience. It's, without over explaining, 
brilliant. And yeah, that's that's where I'm going to end this one today. Um, I'm going to record another one now where I look at your short stories inspired by the colour red. <laughs> Sorry, Kyra's been snoring throughout the background of this recording. <laughs> but she's being very, very adorable. So sorry if you can hear her in the background, but she's my cute little baby. And um, yeah, I love it a bit. So there's that. But thank you all so much for your submissions. Thank you all for taking part in the Fresh Poet Society. I absolutely love doing this with you guys. And I'm so happy to be back recording and talking about this kind of thing again. So thank you to everyone who submit poems. I'm sorry if I didn't get a chance to read yours out in the video, but believe me when I say I went through the forums um, in as much depth as I could and read as much as I could. And I'm so impressed with everyone and um, very, very grateful. So for now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please head down to the comments and feel free to discuss these poems. What were your favorite? Um, what did you like? If you have your own poems, uh, please, feel free to leave them in the comments as well for people to read and critique and talk about and, you know, have discussions about. Um, I really do want this to be a safe space where people can share their creativity and their ideas without ever feeling ashamed or embarrassed or attacked. You know, if you have critiques, make sure they're with the best intentions, with wanting to improve someone's work and not just tear it apart. Because things like poetry, someone can really put their heart and their soul and some really deep stuff into their work and there's no point just tearing it apart for the sake of it but if you want to help someone build up to create something even better and greater then please go ahead and do that i really really encourage it and um, if you are new here please feel free to subscribe to my channel um on youtube it's youtube.com forward slash rachel oats because i talk about poetry book reviews i also talk about lots of social issues and lots of pro lgbtq stuff lots of feminism stuff um, and i also talk about science and debunk bad pseudoscience and all kinds of stuff like that it's a real mixed bag you know if you're listening on itunes or spotify or whatever your preferred podcast platform is then um Thank you for being here. Thank you for downloading this. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you can get be kept up to date with all the latest episodes. And don't forget, if you want to submit your own work, you can check out the Fresh Poets Society forums. Bit of a tongue, tongue twister there. <laughs> You can check out the Fresh Poets Society forums over on my website at racheloats.me. That's R-A-C-H-E-L-O-A-T-E-S dot M-E. Um, that was me done for now. Sorry, this was a ramble. Thank you for watching or listening or whatever. Um, I appreciate you guys a hell of a lot and I'll see you all again very, very soon.